welcome back to our three month challenge. I have another killer five minute challenge for you. And today we are doing legs and glutes and we have our helpers Rigatoni and Foxy <laughs> here with us as well. If you haven't joined us already, it is not too late. Just head to the description box below for your promo code to get one month free to the Fit Body app, which is where this challenge is at. All right guys, so I'm gonna go over proper form for all the moves in today's challenge. So move number one has weights and it is going to be a sumo squat and a toe raise. I'm gonna to have to ask my helper Rigatoni to go to the side so you guys can see my form. <laughs> All right, so as you guys know, with a regular squat, you're slightly wider than shoulder width, but with a sumo squat, you're going wide. So, and you want your toes, instead of them to be in line with your knees and pointing somewhat forward, you want them to be pointing out diagonally like that, okay? Bring the dumbbells up to your chest, engage your core, and then you're gonna squat down, keep your core engaged, and then you're gonna raise and go up on your tippy toes. All right, and then back down, and up on your tippy toes, and really be sure that your core is engaged through this. So for example, it's engaged right now. If I relax it, it's not, and then when I go down into the squat, it's engaged and it's not, okay? so. As you guys should know by now, keeping your core tight throughout the move is really important. Let me show you from the side. So you can see that I'm squatting back like I'm sitting in a chair. <sighs> okay, and then up on your tippy toes and back down. And that is about it for move number one. I lost one of my helpers. Foxy is gone, but I still have Rigatoni. <laughs> All right. Move number two is going to be a stationary jumping lunge. So you are going to get in a lunge position and then you're going to lunge down and then you jump up and then you land softly. So let me show you from the side. So feet staggered <laughs> and then you lunge down. Remember when you're lunging, you want that back knee to be dropping, okay? So you, when you do a lunge, you don't wanna be shifting forward. That's not the point of the lunge. The point is to drop that back knee, hinge your hips so you can really get in that glute, and then you're gonna jump and then land. And when you're at the peak of your jump, I want you to point your toes so you can get more quad engagement, glutes, and some of your hamstrings as well. Just like that. And then you're gonna switch sides. How are you doing, Rigatoni? Those are pretty tough, huh? <laughs> All right. This is actually a pretzel from Disneyland and we tore it apart, so it's now his toy. All right, move number three is going to be a stiff leg deadlift. So grab your weights. <sighs> Ooh, okay, so I'm gonna show you from the front and from the side. Ricky, Tony, can you come over here? Good boy. All right, so <sighs> proper breathing is really important with this one. So what you're going to do, I'm actually gonna start from the side. So what you're going to do is hinge your hips. This is the most important thing about a stiff leg deadlift is that you hinge your hips, okay? Imagine that you're pointing your booty to the wall behind you. So that is part number one. Then part two is that for these dumbbells, they need to kind of glide along your quads and then your shins, okay? So one problem that people have with this move is they end up feeling it too much in their back because they're dropping it too far forward. So your center of gravity is no longer balanced and you're no longer targeting your hamstrings and your glutes. You end up engaging your back because it's trying to balance and keep you from tipping over. So hinge those hips, drag those dumbbells along your shins, okay? When your back is about parallel, then you go back up and when you're standing up, you're not just lifting up with your back, okay? You're, I'm actually pushing through my feet, pushing, 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 and that's really going to further engage my glutes and my hamstrings, okay? So, one fluid motion, like that. Squeeze at the top. Slightly internally rotate your pelvis. And then also, of course, keep your core tight. So my core is tight. If it's not tight, it's gonna be like that, okay? Keep your core tight and back up. So from the front, really quick. And back up. As far as breathing, inhale. Exhale as you stand up. 
One last note about this move is your neck position. So you don't want to be here and have your neck looking up at the ceiling. You want your spine and your back to be in a straight line, just like that. All right, you guys are all set to crush your stiff leg deadlifts. Now on to jumping lunges. So I know we just did stationary jumping lunges. So this one's going to be a little bit more dynamic. So instead of staying in this position, we are actually going to be swapping and alternating sides throughout. And then remember, it's really important not to let those knees cave in, okay? So be sure that those knees are out. If you need to stabilize in between each rep, that is totally okay. If you feel like you can't transition side to side without your knee caving in, so don't hesitate to slow it down. Just like that. Keep that chest up. Your chest doesn't actually need to be completely upright in lunges. Um, you can have a slight forward lean. It's just that you don't want your back to be rounded. So when I say keep your chest up in lunges, it's not to have a completely upright torso. It's just to be sure that your back isn't rounding. <sighs> Three of those reps and I'm already out of breath. <laughs> All right, time for move number five. We have a squat pulse. I'm gonna grab these weights again. So not doing sumo, just a regular squat. So feet slightly wider than shoulder width. Dumbbells up at your shoulders, drop into a squat, and then you're gonna pulse. Remember that you are pushing up through your feet, evenly distribute your weight from your heels to your toes, and keep your core tight. That is it from the front. Let me show you from the side. Squat back like you're sitting in a chair. Keep your core tight, your chest up, so you're not bending over too much. And just one note about squats. I don't think I've addressed this in the challenge, is that there's a lot of people that say like, you know, don't bend your back at all in squats or don't let your knees move past your toes. But recent research has actually shown that your mechanics of a squat are gonna look much different from someone else's because it depends on your torso length, depends on your femur bone length, and overall your anatomy. So some people, might be able to squat, let's see if I can do this, super, super, super upright, and others might have a little bit of a forward lean. So don't feel like you need to force your back up. Of course, you want to be as upright as you can, but don't feel like you need to make it look like someone else's. As long as you have proper form and you're engaging the right muscles, that is all that matters. And one last note as far as your knees passing your toes. So that is probably one of the biggest proper form cues when it comes to squats or lunges, and it's actually been somewhat disproven. There's a caveat. So when you squat, your knees can pass your toes, but your heels need to be on the ground. If your heels lift off, that is where you risk injuring your knee. So keep that in mind as you crush today's squats and lunges. And you guys are all set. I'm already out of breath. I'm so excited for you to do this workout. Let me know what your favorite move was of today's challenge, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>